Look, you can see he's immediately stuck his hand up and apologized, and he's quite mortified, actually. So, um, but uh, he'll, he'll obviously learn from that. OK, um, obviously, we, we've got to get... First time we've spoken to you this weekend, after everything that happened on, on Sunday in Austria, I wasn't there, but obviously, for watching on, you back your man, as you're going to do. Has, has your stance changed at all, now that we've seen every available angle, etc., etc., of, of, oh, of the really. I mean, look, it's hard racing between the two of them. I think you can see... The two of them have spoken about it, um, and, and obviously it's been rowed back a bit from where Lando's position was, understandably with the emotion following the race. But uh, uh, yeah, you know, I'm sure we're going to see more hard racing between the two of them over the second half of the year. But uh, you learn from it, you move on. Uh, were you about to tell Max that Lando was going to get a five-second penalty? It hadn't actually been declared at that point. Um, it was, well, that was the, yeah, that was the frustrating bit. As they're coming back on three wheels, it suddenly came up on the screen. And if that caller had come 30, 40 seconds earlier, we'd have obviously informed Max. But uh, you just don't know at the time and ifs, buts, and maybes. But uh, yeah, you know, it was what really put us in that position was a, a, a slow pit stop. You know, otherwise he would have been seven seconds up the road. I was just about to pick up on that point exactly. I mean, your team has been so on point with everything they do. It's kind of uncharacteristic that we saw a mistake like that. But on top of that, Max obviously came out on used mediums versus Lando yeah. on the news. So was there a little bit of a sense of guilt from the team that maybe you dropped the ball slightly on that weekend, a little bit uncharacteristic? Well, there, there were a few things that's changed from about lap 50. Suddenly, it started to get cooler, and we'd put all our eggs in the hard basket, um, expecting the temperatures to be higher and saved a new set of hards for the race. The wind changed direction, and then we had a slow pit stop with a sticking left rear wheel nut. And uh, you know, so Max, and then we had to hold the car on top of that for Lando um, to not have an unsafe uh, release. So between all of that, that then put Lando, who had the benefit of a new medium, um, to to get into the DRS of Max. You must be delighted. Lando's capitulated a bit. It's a psychological victory for Max in what is going to become quite a frequent wheel to wheel. Well, look, I mean. For me, that incident started a week earlier in, uh, on the run down to Turn 1 in Barcelona where Lando had him on the grass. Um, on the payback? Are you saying that's turn payback? One. I'm not saying it's payback, but you can see they're starting to get feisty. And these guys have raced each other uh, and race hard throughout their careers. And you know Max, he's going to fight for every inch of tarmac. And uh, I'm sure Lando will have will have learned from that. I'm sure that, that yeah, Max will have learned something from that as well. And uh, yeah, ultimately, he got a penalty for it, which uh, uh, obviously was unfortunate as well. Christian, undoubtedly, you would have heard the comments from Andrea Stella, who was very strong about it afterwards, saying that you know, the, the reason that this is allowed to happen is perhaps because of inconsistency from stewarding and, and, and perhaps that not have been enforced going backwards. I think it was pointedly towards 2021. Uh, how do you respond to what he said? Well, look, I haven't heard all of what he said, but, uh, you know, the stewards have a job to do. They award penalties when they felt it, that somebody's committed something wrong. And, you know, they felt that Max had, had obviously moved, so they gave him a 10-second penalty. But, uh, uh, yeah, obviously there's always a lot of emotion running high after a race. And, um, uh, you know, I can only imagine it's not a position Andrea's been in before. So, uh, um, you know, maybe there were some high emotions running. Third of three races in this triple header. What's happening here? What have you got on the car and, and how's it looking? Yeah, it's been a solid start to the to the weekend. It was drier than expected. Um, and it's so tight. I mean, the McLarens are quick. They ran the soft uh, tyre in that session. Mercedes on the medium, again, looking very close. So, And Ferrari there or thereabouts. So I think, again, it's all going to be about who gets it right on the day. And, you know, marginal errors like a pit stop will make a, a, a difference in this Grand Prix. What about Aston? Do you, they seem as? Uh, do you think they might be running a bit less fuel, or are they genuinely I hope competitive? So. I mean, they suddenly came from from nowhere, so uh, so that either smells of fuel or, um, or or engine mode. But let's see. I mean, that could be another car. Christian, I have to ask. Obviously, just coming back to Lando and Max very quickly, because I'm assuming we're going to see lots of racing between the two of them for the rest of the season. Although there's not a lot you can probably tell a driver like Max. Was there anything you said to him afterwards? I mean, that clumsy mistake between the two of them obviously cost you guys a victory would you well, like him to handle things differently or do you want to just let him do his thing well look, we talk about these things uh, at length in a briefing you know things were discussed and you know obviously subsequent to that but uh, you know that's uh, you're always learning in life and and you know, you apply your lessons you know, going forward but max you know his makeup he's a very tough racer and uh 
uh, you know, it's the first time sort of Lando's in that that position with him, and uh, I'm sure both of them will have learned from it. Without sounding like a broken record, we, we're always going to ask you about uh, Sergio as well. He's got 11 points in the last four races. Um, where's he at? What are you talking to him about at the moment? Well, obviously, you know, Sergio's had a had a tough spell, and his you know his first five races have been uh, you, you know were very competitive. His the last five have been nowhere, and. Uh, uh, we want to see the Sergio from the first five back. Um, he knows that. He's aware of that. He's been working hard on that. He's been in the sim, you know, this week, um, and uh, you know, working hard to understand where it's just not playing out for him. But um, what we've constantly seen with him is this resilience to be able to bounce back, and you know, we're hoping to see that very soon. Do you wish you hadn't have signed him quite so early for next year? That's a, uh, a brutally hard question. <laughs> Uh, Martin, but of course, you know, at the point that you sign a driver, um, the contents of any agreement are not going to be disclosed to all of you lot. Um, so it made absolute sense to sign Checo at that point in time. But, you know, this is a, a business in which there are pressures to deliver. So you, you mentioned now, and you also said in Austria, how he bounces back well. But yep. this is also the second time in a row, in two years in a row, where we've seen him dip. Have you been able to identify what is what, what's causing that? Where's this lack well, of confidence? That's why we thought the contract would help. <laughs> so, so um, but uh, you know, I think it's something that Checo's working very hard on, and uh, he knows. He, look, this is a, uh, a a sport where there's no hiding. You know, you get particularly with Max Verstappen as your teammate. He knows he's being measured against the very best, and we need him up there supporting Max because there's two McLarens now, there's two Ferraris, there's two Mercedes, and we need there to be, you know, desperately two Red Bulls. Last one, very quickly. Quite perverse. In trouble, but they're still the going. So you've got someone going wheel to wheel with Max, or would you prefer a season like last year? Well, look, we're all racers at the end of the day, and 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 you know, wheel to wheel racing, what it's all about. I mean, last year was a, a incredible. It was a unicorn year, yeah. uh, and winning races by 20, 25 seconds is a lot less stressful than uh, you know what we've seen so far this year. But the value of a win that is hard fought just feels that much more rewarding. Tom, thank you very much.